Okay, the second method says the applet of an online applet or an online vector calculator compute the magnitude and the angle of the net force. Google vector addition applets and so on. So we go to this one here and I'm just going to do this one and pull it up. So there it is. And that actually does the work for us. It will put all the vectors tip to tail. Still, I want you to make the drawings because that immerses you into actual doing it and the understanding should be more clear when you actually have to do it yourself than simply just using this applet. And that's um, also a reason why I do both, why I have you do both. Okay, let me see, let me push this up a little bit more. Okay, on the applet. So I would have 2.3 newtons at an angle of 270 degrees. And I would have 4.9 newtons at an angle of 180 degrees. And notice what's happening. This applet here, unfortunately, cannot really make it to scale. So with, oops, I didn't mean to do that, with such small numbers, um, they're, the vectors are way too tiny. So what I'm actually going to do instead is I'm going to multiply each number with 100 by 100. So I'm going to have 230 at an angle of 270 here. This looks almost like I'm using the grams. And then 490 at an angle of 180 degrees. And now it looks a whole lot nicer. That one's actually pretty long. And then I need a third vector. And that would be... 170 at an angle of 0 degrees and that one comes straight back and that's yet another possibility how you can add these three vectors graphically in whichever order and that's what I pointed out in my graphical method that it doesn't matter in which order you put them. Okay, show the resultant and that looks pretty much the same the way I just drew it. Notice that it measures here 3.9 newtons. Again, remember that I had to scale everything by a factor 100, so 3.9 newtons at an angle of 216 degrees. And that's what I'm going to write down here. So 3.9 newtons at an angle of 216 degrees. Looks pretty similar to the graphical one and you would have to decide you know which one of these two is actually more accurate the one you draw yourself or the one that you let the applet do and you have to talk about that in the conclusion and perhaps in a post lab question okay trigonometric if you're in a physics class that does not require a trigonometry leave this one out if you are in a physics class that does require trigonometry, of course, you will do this one here. Okay, so here it would be. I didn't type the example in. I think I'll take a moment out here and we'll actually do that. Okay, here I've just done that. So, example. This would be force 1, which is 2.3 newtons, times the cosine of the angle of 270 degrees. I'm going to leave out the degree sign here. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in a, in a moment. Um, plus 4.9 newtons times cosine of 180 degrees and plus 1.7 newtons times the cosine of 0 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to put that one in and use a superscript on it. And, whoops, there we go. And here we go. That's in the x direction. For the y direction, I'm going to use the sine, of course, sine, and 
there we go. Okay, and now I calculate. Okay, so here's the calculator. And it says, oh, first I'm gonna see if I'm in degrees. I'm not, so I'm gonna change this to from radians to degrees. And then it's gonna be 2.3 times cosine 270 plus 4.9 times cosine 180. And I just noticed I forgot to close the parentheses plus 1.7 times cosine of 0. Hit enter. That's the first one. The negative, of course, means that it points to the left. And then the y direction, all I have to do is just do exactly the same thing, except change the cosines to sines. Okay, and again the minus means that it points down, so minus 3.2, minus 2.3. Negative 3.2 newtons and negative 2.3 newtons in order to figure out what the net force is. I have to use the Pythagorean, so I'm going to do the square root of negative 3.2 squared plus negative 2 point whoops 2.3 squared close the parentheses for the square root and I come up with 3.9 newtons of course that's exactly the same number that the applet gave me and for the angle I'm gonna do the inverse tangent of the y component over the x component and I come up with that 35, 36 degrees rounded and of course I'm in the third quadrant so 36 degrees plus 180 degrees is the 216 degrees so this one comes out to 3.9 newtons and this one comes out to 216 degrees see if my degree, oops, my degree sign didn't work anymore. When I paste it. Okay. So, turns out that right here on this one, the trigonometric one, is identical to the applet one. That's no surprise because the applet one, of course, is based on the trigonometric method as you can imagine. And the last one here is actually what I measured. Well from the video you may remember I measured 3.7 newtons at an angle of 33 degrees. I believe that's what I said. So comparing the numbers here what I actually measured here is pretty close to what I determined trigonometrically or applet or the graphical method the angle here, why is that different? 33 degrees, quite different from 215 or 216 degrees. Well, that's because this measured force here is the counter force to the net force being measured over here. Notice that for these here, I wrote down the net force of these three weights that I have hanging over the strings. And this one here is the counter force. So it has to be in the opposite direction. And notice that 33 degrees would be opposite of 213 degrees and that of course is relatively close to the others. And when you do your calculations, your results, you would have to comment on comparisons between these methods over here and what was actually measured and perhaps in between here and figure also out what kind of errors are involved in this experiment that puts the results a little bit different from perfect results. And that was my example for the force table.